Dragon's Dogma 2 have just released their character creator and storage demo on Steam so that you can go in and create your main Arisen and your main pawn for the game when it releases on March 22nd. So what we're going to be doing today is going through this character creator and going over a few things that you can do in it as well as some tips and tricks along the way to clarify a few things that you might be wondering about when you're creating a character and for any newer players of the game going over some nifty things that you might like to know as you are going along. So once you launch up this demo, it will take you to the Dragon's Dogma 2 homepage here. And as you can see, you've got all these different options. But we are, of course, going to do the character creator. Now, it lets you choose here the Arisen. For those that aren't familiar with the series, the Arisen is the main character that you will be playing as. And then you've got your main pawn. Now, pawns in the game are essentially your followers, your sidekick, your helpers. And your main one is going to be the character that is always with you in the game. And it is also going to be the character that other players can use. Now, this might be because you gain certain knowledge of enemies, certain knowledge on quests, or because you are a higher level, so you are able to hire other people's higher level pawns in order to help you in your game. So you want to make them look pretty cool and give them some interesting and good stats as well. So it's going to be a both emphasis on both of these things, but obviously your main character. So if we go ahead and select Arisen firstly, then we're going to go in and this is going to be our main one. You can see I've kind of made my guy that I'm going to be using here, but if we go into the empty slot, and click confirm here you can see that you can choose a preset or you can create a new one now it says here we can choose a race body type and base head to determine the character's basic appearance you will then be able to make further edits by selecting the customize once finalized the arisen's race cannot be changed so you go in here you've got sort of four different options we're going to stick with kind of the first one here but you can see there's kind of like a almost a feline style of body type here or a regular sort of human appearance so we're going to go for this one just on the basis you've then got a few different options here now other than the being basic preset options there is actually a point to this because the different weights that you have obviously determine the amount of weight that you can carry in your backpack so in terms of gear and curatives and things like that so healing different mystic items that you will gather around your travels but it also determines the rate at which stamina will deplete so as we're going through this bear in mind the heavier you are the more you can carry but the faster you will lose stamina and so things like climbing onto your enemies will be harder but you're going to be able to carry heavier things so again depending on the type of playstyle that you wanted to go for do bear that in mind so again we're just going to pick the basic default so this is pretty cool it's actually quite photorealistic if you have a look at some of the presets, so these are kind of the options that you get. You can obviously press Q and E at the top there to kind of go over the pages. You can see that that one is similar, but they're, they're slightly different, different hairstyles, all that kind of stuff. So you can pick up on any of these, you can see over the five pages there. So now, none of those affect anything except basically the look and appearance of your character. But if we go into this a little bit more in depth now, you can see the height is basically set at 180. If we pump this right up, you can see you can make your character huge at 215 here, but that is gonna increase the weight to 108. Now, if you are in the character creation screen, you can click on this gold line and it will tell you when you go back to what the default was. So if you wanna put it back to default, also, if you're going across on the arrows, you can see once it gets back to 180, that goes back to a white number rather than a gold number. So that's how you know that you are back to the default as well. So you can adjust these as you would like. As I say there, certain things will increase or decrease the weight. The most important thing to note is that the higher the weight, the higher carrying capacity, but also the faster the stamina depletion will be. So you can go through and look at body, head, upper body, lower body posture. And movement style is pretty cool. You should have a mess around with this. You can make your character walk in some interesting ways, um, depending on what you want to look at there. You can then go over to the head customization and look at everything individually. So your head, your skin, your eyebrows, your eyes, your nose, ears, cheeks, mouth, jaw, all of that stuff. And then body hair. So your hairstyle, eyebrows, facial hair, body hair, etc. Makeup on all of those categories and then tattoos and piercings. Now, when you're done with this, you can click finalize and you can go into your vocation. Now, this is a really, really important one because vocations are going to be what you start the game playing. So as you can see here, you have fighter, which fighters battle their enemies in close quarters, wielding a sword and shield. Their mighty attacks and counterattacks allow them to cut down foes with ease. You have the archer, which archers wield the bow, striking down foes from a distance. Their arrows are quick to find the enemy weak points, turning the tide of battle. You have the mage, which mages use their staves to cast a variety of spells. Their command of enchantments and curative magics make them a helpful addition to any party. And finally, thief, 
which thieves appear as a flash of daggers on the battlefield, too quick for the eye. Their speed and agility allows them to break through the enemy's guard with ease. Now, you can see at the bottom of these, it says on all of them, vocation can be changed later. Anyone new to the Dragon's Dogma series should note that you can pretty much change vocation whenever you would like. There is some small caveats, like towards the very, very start of the game, in Dragon's Dogma 1, you needed something called Discipline Points, which was what you earned from using a certain class to be able to actually change to a new one. So you needed to get a few hundred. It wasn't much, but right at the start, you couldn't just flick between all of them. That being said, once you've played the game for a couple of hours, you'll have plenty of these and can change at will. The only other thing that you need to know about this is that the certain stats, if it follows suit from Dragon's Dogma 1, will be affected when you level up. So, for example, Fighter will give you more strength and a bit more vitality. Archer is going to give you more stamina, Mage is going to give you more intelligence, and Thief I'm actually not sure about because Thief and Archer were kind of bowled into one in the first game, now they are two separate things, you can see this one is a bow character, this one is a daggers character, before that was the same class, you could use daggers and a bow, so I'm not too sure how that will work, I'm assuming that you will also get some damage and some stamina regen on this one, this one's going to be more range based, but I'm not entirely sure there, but it does affect when every time you level up you'll gain more stats in a certain class, so if you have looked into the class system in the game and you wanted to go for one particular thing, try and pick a class that's going to either be the class that you want to play or is going to lead into it nicely because as I say you will be getting points when you level up but that being said you can change whenever you would like. So for the purposes of this we're going to go ahead and we're going to pick Archer right here and then you all can also choose a voice so it can be any that you would like and then you click finalize. You can choose a name and a moniker, and then that is done. Next, then, you want to go onto your main pawn. And like I said, this is going to be the follower that stays with you for the whole game. So you get the same options, the same choose a preset, choose new, same body types, etc. And then you can basically just choose any random character that you would like to assist you on your journey. So you can just go ahead. Again, you've got a few different options of, of players that you can choose on all these different pages at the top. Again, once you get into the advanced customization, it's exactly the same options until you go into the next stage here which you will see there is an inclination as well as vocation. Now vocation for your main pawn is going to be important because they're going to be able to aid you in battle depending on obviously what you choose. If you're going for a ranged class I would highly recommend putting a fighter in there. If you are going for one of the ranged classes I would recommend putting them as either the archer or the mage and if you do want them to heal and imbue your weapons with things like fire, ice, lightning etc then the mage is really really good. In Dragon's Dogma 1, most peoples that were the most popular were people who had their main pawn being a mage because it allowed them to cast lots of healing and also imbue the weapons, which is super, super helpful. Especially that given in Dragon's Dogma, certain enemies are weak to certain enchantments. And if your weapon doesn't have that, a mage has the capability to give you that imbuement. Especially when they learn of what enemies are weak to, they will then automatically give you the imbuement that they are weak to if they have it equipped. So it's really, really useful. Now again, your main pawn will build points when they level up like the main character will. So if you want them to have more intelligence, start them as a mage. More strength and vitality, start them as a fighter. If you want them to have stamina, thief, archer, any of those sort of things. And again, there is some talk of there being pawn only vocations in the game so I'm not sure how that is going to work as of right now we don't know for definite but again they can build into stuff and personally I think the mage is really really cool so I'm going to go for that one the other really important thing to have is the inclination now the inclination is how your pawn will behave when they are in your game and also when they are in other people's games so if other people hire them out and use them they're going to be more helpful. Now, just as a quick thing, the reason you want them to be helpful is because in the first game, at least you could leave reviews, so one to five stars and how good they were at each thing. And you could also give them gifts if they were helpful to take back to the main character. It also means that you're going to get more rift credits the more people that hire out your follower. So you want to make them as good as you possibly can. So the inclinations here are kind-hearted, which is compassionate, devoted and dutiful. Favours a balanced approach with an emphasis on support. Quick to aid allies in need. So they're going to be going for things like revives or bringing those characters that are down towards you as well as healing. So that could be really good if you want to focus on a healer sort of build. Calm is rational, shrewd and strategizing. Favours defence and evasion, employing clever tactics to survive at all costs. This would be really good for an archer or a ranger type of build. They're going to stay back, they're going to go for strategy and they're going to go for defence and evasion. So it could also be good for a fighter if you want them to be more like a tank. Simple is curious, earnest and adventurous, enjoys exploring and gathering items and is always up for a challenge. So they're going to be great at going around grabbing all of the secret chests, all of the items that you find on the floor, as well as just going in and fighting in any manner that they see fit. 
and then straightforward is candid, flippant and impulsive. Enjoys the thrill of combat, tackling fierce foes head on with daring assaults. It's going to be really good for an all-out attack based follower. If you want someone that's just going to dive in on the enemies and attack them straight away, maybe you want a really aggressive fighter or thief style build, then this is going to be great for you. Personally for me, I'm going to go for kind hearted because I think that's going to be super useful. So you can go ahead and do that. Again, choose the voice and then finalize with a name and a moniker. Hopefully you have enjoyed this video and found it useful and if you are as excited as I am for Dragon's Dogma 2 then make sure you drop a subscribe with the notification bell on down below as I am going to be covering tons and tons of videos on this game once it does release. If you did find the video useful and you're going to go ahead and do your own character creation drop me a like down below and let me know in the comments what are you going to go for first in vocations. Other than that I'd like to thank you for watching and I'll catch you again very very shortly on a brand new upload. Take care and peace.